what it, when you when you when you're talking about addiction. Mm -hmm. What, you What's an addiction? What is an addiction? What's yeah. an addiction? I don't know who you went. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can answer that easily, can't we? In a few sentences, really. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Um, most people on earth would believe that an addiction is always physical in its nature. In other words, you know, drinking alcohol too much and getting drunk every night, that's an addiction. Or, you know, t shooting up drugs, that's an addiction. Or, uh, you know, having lots and lots of sex with lots of different people and being promiscuous all the time, that's an addiction. But the reality th is that we call those physical addictions. And the reality is also that it's the emotional addictions on the planet that are even worse, generally, than the physical addictions. The, the thing about a physical addiction is that you can see it. You know that the person who has the addiction has the addiction. Or, and, and even if they don't know themselves, then everyone around them does. The problem with emotional addictions is they're a lot harder to determine. So let's define an emotional addiction. An emotional addiction is me using something that I want from you and emotionally in order to cover over a fear that I have inside of myself that I'm unwilling to experience. So in other words, I'm trying to get a feeling from you that if you didn't give it to me, I would either feel angry or upset that you didn't give it to me, or I'd feel disappointed with you that you didn't give it to me, or I'd feel like, oh, I'll just go to another person who will give me that and, and forget about you altogether. And these kind of addictions are insidious because since they are emotional, most people sort of accept them as, as okay. You know, they're better than a physical addiction is what most people think. Whereas we feel that these are the kinds of addictions that prevent good relationships. They're the kinds of uh, addictions that prevent a relationship with God. They're the kind of addictions that prevent you from truly seeing yourself. So if I can give maybe an example. Um, let's say in my childhood I had a, a, a father that was not, you know, I was, my birth father was not present in my life. He, uh, he never gave me any approval. And I grew, grew up feeling and missing my, uh, an approval of a father figure. Let's say that's what's happened. As an adult, I'm going to have an addiction to try to find men around me who will give me approval. So I might do things for them in the hope that they will give me some sense of approval, some sense of self-worth. When they don't, I get angry with them. And when they do, they're my mate or my friend. But I'm always doing things not out of love. I'm not doing them out of a pure desire. I'm doing them to get the approval. That's an addiction. That's an example of a person who's unwilling to feel that their father wasn't present, wasn't unwilling to have a good cry about it, unwilling to let it go. When the person has a good cry about it and lets it go, a good cry about the fact that their father wasn't present and that he didn't give her, them any approval, and they let that go, they won't go around doing things for men just to get their addiction met. They will do things for all people, men and women, because they wish to give a gift of themselves to the person, not for any other reason. That's in harmony with pure love. That's more in harmony with God's love. But we see a lot of the interactions on the planet are actually completely out of harmony with love, as God defines it, and completely in harmony, you know, in agreement with. Um, you do something for me, I do something for you. Here in Australia we have the saying, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Right. <laughs> and that's how many people see their lives, you know. If you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. We'll be mates while you're scratching my back and I'm scratching yours. But as soon as one of us decides we want to go and do something different, we're no longer friends and we're no longer acquaintances and we no longer love each other and we no longer give each other gifts. And we feel that a real gift is giving somebody a gift that you don't get anything in return for, really, and that you don't have any expectation of anything in return. And that's an indication of whether you're loving or not in that moment. Whereas what we see happening for a lot of people is this strong desire that they have to only do things while the other person's doing something for them. And as soon as the other person doesn't meet their expectation, then that's it. That's the end of the arrangement. It's, it's a, like a bartering system, really. And we see the barter system works very well on the planet, it seems to, but it's not based on love. And, and certainly in the higher spheres of the spirit world, and the barter system disappears in preference to the gifting system, <laughs> which is giving another person a gift without an expectation of anything in return. 
So that's what we're encouraging people to do when it comes to addictions. Yeah. If we consider that an addiction is anything that we use... Uh, you want to take a shot of the turkey? The turkey as I might quickly. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting from my bag. Uh, that's called a brush turkey. Brush turkey. Yeah, they're native to Australia. My dad has this joke. He always says, those bush turkeys, you can eat them. You just get a stone, you put it in a pot of boiling water, you put the turkey in, you boil it till the stone's off, take the turkey out, eat the stone. Eggs, <laughs> <laughs> And she just ticks off. And the male maintains the temperature of the mound and brings up all the chicks. Yeah. So that's a male. Do you want to scoot that way? Because I'm going to scoot. Scoot some of the Yeah, it's going to be okay. Or should we... Yeah, that's no, fine. Are you guys getting hungry? Not, Not yet. Really? No. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Are you getting hungry? Okay. Yeah. Kind of lose your, lose your inspiration. Right? Yeah, I know. We have to stop the flow, haven't we? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. That's I'll why just... in our interviews and stuff we never do it. Yeah, we don't stuff. cut, we just go... Yeah, yeah it just does break it. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Okay. okay. You can think about an addiction as something that involves, or anything that involves, using a, a substance or an emotion to avoid some fear or pain inside of us. So commonly on the earth we're used to regarding things like alcoholism and excessive use of drugs as addictions but many of us use other tactics if you like or other devices emotionally to avoid our pain and fear so some of us a lot of us women like to have control we like to have control of our environment in our relationships and that helps us to avoid feelings of pain and fear that we're holding on to from the past other people have addictions to attention which helps them avoid feeling feelings of loneliness that they haven't let go of from their past. Other people have addictions to... Look, there are many... Any time we use an emotion, uh, an emotional interaction or an interaction with another to, to receive an emotion that is not already residing within us, a pleasant emotion which is not already residing within us, we're actually in a state of addiction with that person. And what we teach people is that it's possible to have these pleasant and secure emotions within us if we're willing to take initiative ourselves and heal ourselves emotionally. And that means actually stepping back from those emotional addictions and saying, actually, I'm not going to, be, I'm not going to control my environment or I'm not going to do things for attention and glory. I'm actually going to need to deal with the pain from my past. And when I do, I'm going to feel like a, a happy, secure person for myself. Yeah, I think that. I think.